Hi, I'm Debbie Ahern and welcome back. And today we're going to do a beach scene with the focus on flip-flops and a starfish. And I hope that um, gets you in the mood for thinking about summer, because I certainly want summer to be here and <clears throat> everything else <laughs> to disappear at this point. Okay, here we go. Last week, everything I mentioned, have your palette ready. Your colors go along the edge from light to dark, uh, from white. And today we're going to use some yellow okra, which is great for sand. You also have your cadmium yellow from last week, orange, the red, green, a new color, cerulean blue. And that color up here is a burnt sienna, which is in the brown family. But if you don't have that for the shadows in the starfish, you can always do what we learned last week, which was mixing complementary colors, which were blue and orange. You can make a brown and then tone it down with a little white and you'll be able to get uh, some of that shadow in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna look at the sky. Remember we measured, okay, you kind of get an idea of where the horizon is. So it looks like the horizon is about a quarter of the way down. So I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue and mix it on the center of my palette, adding a little water and a little white. More white than blue. And instead of using a pencil, I'm gonna go straight across best I can and blend that blue, the blue and the white, which gives you that ultramarine blue and white, more white than blue, you get that periwinkle blue color sky. Okay. Now, it's a little watery. Let's see if I can get a little more color on my brush. And of course, I'm working a little faster because this is a video and you're going to take a longer period of time. So keep bear that in mind. So get that sky in. We really didn't need a pencil to put that horizontal line in. If, like I said uh, another time, if you need a straight edge, just use a ruler if you really have a hard time making a straight line. So there's my sky, right? And I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And have a rag ready. Make sure you get that color out of the brush. And then we're looking at, okay, the water looks like it's about halfway down. About the same distance as the, the the sky, right? So before I put that line in the turquoise, the cerulean blue for the for the water, I want to sketch in these flip flops. So you'll take a pencil and you'll want to sketch in your flip flops and a starfish, right? Before so that way before you do the water, because if you put the water right across here first, and then you try to paint in your flip-flops, then you got, it might be too much of a color that you have to cover over. So we want to avoid that. So I'm going to sketch in, they look like kidney beans, so think of kidney beans, and sketch, sketch them in. Notice this one's pretty close to the edge of your canvas, so you want to keep that in mind, right? If you go too far this way, then you won't have room for that starfish. So keep that in mind. So now I'm going to make my kidney shape sandals. And remember your first drawing is your first drawing. You're going to always tweak it as you go along. And now here's an interesting thing to keep in mind. See this shape in between? That's what's known as the negative space. So be aware of that shape. That can help you make the other kidney bean or flip flop. So this, the top looks like it's closer. So I'm gonna sketch it. See how these two are coming close together and the same thing at the heel, but it's open on the in near the arch. So we go like that, like that. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here, making sure I leave room for that starfish. Whoops. And the starfish, notice it overlaps one of the flip-flops so you don't have to have too much room left over. Okay, so now again, this flip-flop comes close at the toe. I would 
stop right there and see if I can sketch in one, two, three, four, five. So the starfish has five sections, right? So I'm going to get them in. And finish up that, go back and finish up that kidney beam shape of the flip flop. Okay. I hope you can see that. You can roughly see it. It's hard to see as a pencil. I don't want to use the marker today though because it's not going to work too well. Okay. Whoops. All right. So now I'm looking at that cerulean blue. Now, if you don't have cerulean blue today, go back to your ultramarine blue and it will be like the Great South Bay because we certainly don't have this color water <laughs> on Long Island. So don't worry about it if you don't have the cerulean blue. This is just a great color to invest in for future paintings if you want to do Caribbean scenes or anything with that color. Because you're not going to really get that color with the ultramarine blue. So I'm going to take that color, the cerulean, mix it up on my palette, and I might just take a drop of green just to warm it up a little bit. So now I got that color. Now I'm going to go around my kidney shape beans. My brush seems kind of watery today. I don't put too much water on my brush. Okay, so now I'm looking, what we say? You notice it came down about midway, so I'm going to roughly do the water. I would try to use your brush in a horizontal fashion so it looks more like water. And this, if you go over, you can just use your fingers, only acrylics. Just wipe off where you went over. And sometimes if you really make a big mistake, use a wet rag and wipe it off. So I'm just putting in my cerulean blue, my white, and a drop of that green. If you don't have green, we could use a drop of yellow just to warm it up a little bit. Now, I'm going to put the rest of my water in. And sometimes if you look at pictures of the water, you might want a deeper ultramarine blue in the back so it looks like the water's in the distance and it's deeper. That looks nice too. But we're going to keep it simple today. And bring that water down between my sandals. Again, if you're going to have a little more time than I have right now, but you get the idea. Now, as I said, if I go over into my sandal, I can wipe it off quickly with a rag. All right, so now I'm bringing my water down. Okay. And you can always come back in and go over that again. Now let's see. The water looks like it comes down further, right? All right. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Rinse it out good. Now, it's always good to have more than one brush because those straps on the flip-flops, you do need a thinner brush. This certainly wouldn't work. All right, but <clears throat> I'm gonna go on to the sand. And how do we make the color sand? That cadmium yellow that you had last week, that's not gonna make a good color for sand, but a yellow okra will. So that's worth investing in yellow okra. And so we're gonna take a little yellow okra and some white, more white than the yellow okra to get a nice soft sand color. And you can also use that color for the starfish, but we're going to make it a little darker in certain areas, the starfish, because of the shadow, the way the light falls on it. So I've got this mix of yellow okra going around my sandal. And if I think it's too yellow, not really. Maybe I'll just add a drop more white to it, though. Go. I'm getting that 
expanding. Cover up those lines. We don't want the pencil lines to show. Although some artists, the pencil lines did show, so everyone has their preference and way of doing things. Okay, so now I'm just filling in the sand with the yellow okra and the white. Don't forget that negative space in here in between your, your flip-flops. Get that sand in there. And actually, with the sun, the starfish, you can go right over it because it's going to be that same color, but we're going to add more color to it. But we can go, that makes it easier just to go right over your drawing. And then we'll add a little texture to it with a little bit of that burnt sienna. And again, if you don't have the burnt sienna, which is in that brown family, you're going to mix your complementary colors, orange and blue, to get a brown, and that we can use on the starfish. Okay, so there's my sand. Okay. And sometimes sand has a little darker shadows in it because of where footprints are. We can get into much more detail, but we're going to keep it simple for now. But that's a nice bright color sand. All right, so there's, I mean, we have quite a bit laid out already. Now we're going to, let's see, decide what color flip-flops you want. Now you don't have to have blue and orange. I just thought I'd go with the blue and orange. Maybe you want to go with uh, a pink. So how would we get the pink? We, we would have a little bit of the red. Remember last week we had the alizarin crimson? So you would use, if you want a pink, you take a alizarin crimson and some white. Mix that on your palette. And let's see how the pink looks. Let me do these pink. Ooh, that looks pretty against the cerulean Caribbean looking sea. So again, you're gonna decide, it doesn't have to be blue and orange, doesn't have to be pink, whatever color you you're, you're interested in what you, what's your favorite color? Well, make them in your flip flops. So I'm just filling in my flip flops now. I think I need a little more water on my brush, and maybe a little more paint, a little red, a lizard and crimson, and a little white. So let's see. You know, and if you're not, if you don't have an easel. Working on a flat surface is just as good. Sometimes it helps to be on a flat surface, especially when I'm getting down near the heel. Uh, let's just see if I can swing around with the brush and get my other foot in. Let me see where I'm going. From, from last week, you, you, you really want to lay out where you're going so you have a composition. Like earlier I had started and I put the fit flip-flops too far to the right and then I didn't have enough room for the starfish. So be aware of whatever you're going to paint that you have enough room for whatever object you want to put in your painting. And it's, it's all up to you. So look at the difference. Like blue and orange look very nice because they complement each other. You also have the blue sky and the cerulean blue all complimentary, but now we're just playing around with the pink, just, just for the fun of it, do something else. I'm just doing this because it shows you that you don't have to do exactly what's there. I mean, maybe you only want one pair of flip-flops and a pail and shovel. You can change it around, make it yours. Okay, <clears throat> so I would let that dry before I would put the straps in. Notice the straps of the flip-flops overlap the, in, the inner edge of this flip-flop. Same thing here, goes a little bit over. Uh, but that's a nice touch too, to make it look more realistic. 
Okay, so now let's see if I have pink there. I don't know, let me see now that I have the orange out. It's still a little orange. Maybe I didn't even rinse out my brush. I'm leaving a little bit of that pink in there. Let's do orange. Filling this in. Sometimes I rest my hand right on the edge just to steady my hand. So do that. It's nice to have a little music in the background to keep you in the mood. But sometimes you have to be careful of the music because sometimes it's, this is, seems to be a little fast, so you might end up painting, painting too fast, and it might not be a good idea. All right. Now I see some of those pencil lines, which I'm not thrilled about, but you can let it dry and go over it again. So that's why, I mean, I made the pencil lines here a little darker so that you can see it in the video, but it would be better if you kept it very light so you don't have to try to get, go over all these pencil lines. So I'm filling that in. A little more orange. <clears throat> Again, lean on something if you need to, to keep a steady hand. Now I'm going to go around my starfish. Okay. All right. And then just for the fun of it, you know, if you could, you can even, while the pen, paint is wet, throw, if you had some sand, just throw some sand on it to see how well it sticks. Well, or later on use a little glue just like a kid just playing around with other materials and see how you like it but for now we're just going to work with paint and see how see what we come up with All right. okay <clears throat> so these are still pretty wet so I might just take a smaller brush and get it wet with my rag. And I'm gonna try a little bit of the burnt sienna. Or if you don't have the burnt sienna, it's usually a combination of the orange and the blue, the complementary colors to get a brown. I'm just gonna lighten it up a little bit with the white too much. So I'm just going to play around with, you notice know, like the one side of, usually there's a shadow on one side. So I'm just going to play around with that shadow a little bit. Get a little more definition. Right now I'm just going along the edge. your brush go back to your yellow ochre and soften it up a little bit white but we have to get a little darker than the than the sand color we want to see the difference so let's get that in but you'll play around with this a little longer to get a little more texture you might want to make little Little short strokes to see if you can get more of a texture to it. And if you can, paint in the direction of what the object is. Oops. Getting rid of some of those lines, blending. I might want to go over this again. There's a rough first draft or first painting. Again, an artist wants to go back in and may want to add a little bit more to the water. 
with this guy. They have a little clouds in there. So let's see if we can get some clouds in there. Just take a little white. And you could just kind of put like a windy, wispy type of a clouds that are drifting. And clouds are very interesting, but you have to really look at the clouds. Like today it looks cloudy, so it's hardly, it's not really a good cloud day. So really start looking at clouds. You'll notice under the cloud, under a cloud, the white part, there's usually a little bit of that blue <clears throat> in the sky and, and a touch of, you can even use a touch of black, and that is a little too much black. Take a little bit of the blue to get like a soft blue-gray. And you can use that like <clears throat> underneath parts of the cloud. It should be very subtle. Don't need it too dark. Depending on what kind of a feel you want. But a lot of times it is whiter on top because where the sun is hitting it. It's a little lighter. not thrilled with it you can always take go back to your water and smooth it out and go over it a little bit if you don't want those clouds if you're not thrilled with it you take your ultramarine blue again it's out that brush let's see if I got that so let's see a little more ultramarine with the white just in case I'm like oh, you know what I don't think I like the clouds so I want to do a little bit more sky I might say, you know what, let me just see, maybe I want to, that's a little too dark. But maybe I want to just simplify it. Maybe I don't want that extra cloud there. It'll make the whole sky wispier. And then I just had the wind blow through. And sometimes the sky just, well, not sometimes, it's always changing. Change it up. Okay. And whatever you missed or where if it's too thin a paint, you're adding to it. And if you don't like, like I said, if you don't like the cloud, you paint right over it. But I think I kind of like the clouds drifting by. All right. So now we don't have much left to do. I mean, you're going to, like I said earlier, you're going to take your time and really go in with a little more with the details. But I'm going to try to put in some straps. So maybe I, let's see if I can get that yellow. I don't know how the yellow comes out. Start that. That bumps into part of. So this one, you really need a pretty thin brush, though. Probably more like something like that thin. Let's see if that helps. So we can go over here, take those straps in, and now keep in mind, okay, this one comes down and it doesn't quite go over the edge, but it goes pretty far down the sandal, the flip-flop. And then I have this one over here. This one, I noticed the strap goes almost bumps into the other flip-flop. It goes right out into that negative space and then curls back again. So you'll have to do this a couple of times to make it show up more. So this side doesn't go out too much. Okay. Oh, I'm ready for summer, are you? I think we're all ready for summer. This painting's cheering me up. All right, I'm gonna rinse that out. Came off my brush. Now with the pink, I don't know, we could go with maybe blue. Let's try blue, maybe the ultramarine blue. Or maybe a mix of the cerulean and the ultramarine. Let's see if we can get our 
rest of the flip flop little strap. So this one goes out, comes around and down. Not enough paint on my brush. Definitely not enough paint. So, and not enough water soaking up my paint. So we get this little strap in. This might be too thin, this brush. It always pays to invest in a few brushes. Strap in. colors that you have keep in mind make it make it yours make it what colors that you like more it's not about what I like it's about if you want to hang it up in your home what colors make you happy uh, cerulean blue is a color that makes me happy my kitchen is cerulean blue <laughs> uh, okay so have fun I did bye now <laughs>